Welcome to the teaching ministry of B.D. Hyman. B.D. Hyman's teachings will prepare you to face life's difficult challenges through the power and knowledge of God's Word. Join us now as we discover the truth in God's Word with B.D. Hyman. Hello and welcome. In the world, batteries are seldom included. That's why this tape series, this teaching series, excuse me, is called Batteries Not Included because there is a huge difference between the kingdom and the world. In the kingdom, once you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have the largest battery, the largest power source that exists dwelling inside you, who is the Holy Spirit. He is the power of God on earth. He is God with us and God in us. And so we need to know, number one, that that power is there. It's not just a ritual we go through uh, to receive the Holy Ghost so we can speak in tongues. Tongues are vital. But it's so much more behind it. And as we have this awesome power source in us, we then need to know how to use him, how to let him work through us. That's what he's there for. So, just like with natural batteries, we got to make sure they're facing the right direction. We have to make sure that the terminals are clean so there's a, a proper connection and a full charge. And we have to know how to make use of this full charge. Uh, it doesn't just happen. The Lord gives us the Holy Spirit. He gave us the Holy Spirit following the glorification of Jesus on the day of Pentecost. And it is the most important part of our covenant. It's the thing Jesus talked about more than anything else. But we have to know how to work with the Holy Spirit. We have to know how to make the right connections. In Jude 3 through 5, the word says, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith. We have to contend for the faith. We have to override all the flesh, all of the lies of the devil, all of the natural things of this world in order to be in faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. Faith was delivered to us just as we received the Holy Spirit, but we have to make it work. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. The Holy Spirit takes us into all truth, but those who ignore the truth, who promote lies, are going to be taken into condemnation. And the condemnation is during the tribulation. God is elected to withhold his wrath, withhold his judgment for this 2,000 years. So when the trump sounds, that's up. The age of grace, as it is frequently called, is up. And now he is going to pour out his judgment and his wrath. These were marked out for condemnation. Ungodly men, and that's who the tribulation is for who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Because when one denies the Word, one denies the Lord. He is the Word. The Word is Him. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So by not denying the Word, by not keeping the whole Word, you are actually denying the Lord. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. Who did not believe. So, this is the same God. This is the same God. We have to guard our heart, guard the truth in our heart, because out of our heart flow the forces of life, the force of the Holy Spirit. And it has to be 
the pure word. If you're not properly connected, properly plugged in to the Holy Spirit, then this awesome power and source that we've been given, this source of all healing, all deliverance, all prosperity, will just sit there because the Holy Spirit is our helper. He's here to help us, not do it for us. It's his power, but we have to be connected to it. And this is what most people miss. Even those who are baptized in the Holy Spirit and are sons of God, frequently, the majority of them never make this connection. They just ignore all the things that the Bible tells us we must do. They ignore them. They, they just think that the Holy Spirit's just going to take over and do things. No, it's the devil who takes over and does what he wants to do. The Holy Spirit does not take over. He is available to you at all times, <clears throat> but he does not take over. In John 17, 16 and 17, Jesus says, They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So we are sanctified by his truth. Being properly connected, properly plugged in, making sure everything is going in the right direction and, and the terminals are clean and all these things. And I, I get into a great amount of detail in these teachings on what all that means spiritually, scripturally. And we must realize that when Jesus says obedience is better than sacrifice, and all through even the Old Testament, the Lord said he prefers obedience over sacrifice. Now they had to sacrifice to cover sin. We have the blood of Jesus, which is the ultimate sacrifice that cleanses us, doesn't just cover our sin, it cleanses us from all unrighteousness. But once that cleansing has taken place and we receive the Holy Spirit, now we have to know how to work with him, how to be connected. And this, this statement in John 17 is key, that we are sanctified by the truth. That means we always have to look at the opposite side of Scripture the statements that are made in it. That means that if we are not operating in the whole truth, we're not sanctified. We may be blood-bought, we may be spirit-filled, but it is working with the Holy Spirit, connecting with Him properly. And don't forget that as that is, <coughs> the, the truth is what sanctifies us. Connecting with the Holy Spirit is essential because he came to lead us into all truth. That's what he does. And then it is the power of God resident in him that brings the word to pass in your life. And anything other than the truth, any false doctrine at all, any ignoring of doctrine, causes a disconnect from the Holy Spirit, from this power source. It causes that disconnect. And this is what we need to really wrap our minds around because we have to consciously work with the Holy Spirit every day. If we believe a lie and act on a lie, now listen carefully. Because this is something people don't want to hear. And I, 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 in this ministry, because of God's prompting and instruction, I frequently say things that people haven't heard before, even though they're in the Word. And I frequently say things that upset them until they check it out in the Word and realize it's the truth. So if you have ears to hear, understand that any time you disconnect from the whole truth, and connect yourself to a lie, to false doctrine, 
you are aligning yourself with the devil. That's reality. If you are agreeing with false doctrine, then you have disconnected from the Holy Spirit, even though he's still in you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you, but you can push him into a back corner and grieve him. Then you align yourself with the lie. You are now aligned with the devil. And a great percentage of the church is aligning itself with Satan through his lies, through his false doctrine. Unbelief is the opposite of belief. Unbelief is evil. I'm going to read that to you in a minute, right out of the word. And so evil being what Satan promotes means that if you are disconnected from the truth, from the power of the Holy Spirit, who only operates in the whole truth, then you are also, through your unbelief, aligning yourself with the enemy. And people wonder, they call me and they wonder why it seems that they're under a curse. Yes, they are under a curse. False doctrine, first chapter of Galatians tells us, will cause you to be cursed. It says it twice. Anytime someone believes false doctrine, they are accursed. Well, what can be more of a curse than to be aligned with the devil? But this is something that people's free will accomplishes. Hebrews 3.12 says, Beware. Beware, brethren. So he's talking to the members of the body of Christ, the brethren. And he's saying, beware. Anytime you see that word, beware, that means you. It doesn't mean all the other guys. You know, the signs that are on people's um, fences that say, keep out, this means you, because people tend to think that means everybody but them. Well, this means you, and it means me. It doesn't just mean the other guy. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing, departing from the living God. Unbelief causes that person in the spirit to turn and walk away from God. Just walk in the other direction. And yet people are so confused because through religious abominable teaching, through very minimal teaching as well as out and out false doctrine, people are conditioned, Christians, are conditioned to just assume God's going to do whatever God's going to do. Well, God will do what he chooses to do. Whether you're part of his blessings is up to you. It is up to you. So he says, beware that you don't walk away from God. And while people are in all these huge churches and watching all these things on television and they're crying out to God, they want to get closer to God, they want to know him better. And they're weeping and wailing and virtually begging him. We don't have to beg God. We're not beggars. Believers are not beggars in any respect. And beggars in any respect are not believers. Think about that. But while they're crying out to be closer to God and feeling that there's some barrier between them and God, they're clinging to church's bride doctrine, which is a foul, defiling idolatry. They're clinging to the law and the traditions of the Jews, which Jesus himself said makes the word of God of no effect. In other words, it cancels the effectiveness, any effectiveness of the word of God in your life. So it's no good crying out to God and asking to get closer to him, asking to know him better, asking to see him and walk with him when you're not willing to do whatever it takes to be in the whole truth. That's how you get closer to God. It's not some mysterious thing that you have to run around the church seven times, fall on the floor and flip around and scream and cry and carry on, which is what most people, it seems, uh, tend to think it is. No, God isn't moved by that. God is moved by your faith by your belief in the word, 
by being totally connected to the Holy Spirit who will lead you into all truth. But you have to embrace the truth when it's presented to you. You can't just say, well, you know, we'll all find out when the time comes. No, that isn't good enough. You will find out when the time comes that you're left out, if that's your attitude, and it will be too late to do anything about it. The church will have left the earth, and you will be here for the tribulation. Not a happy thought. But you don't have to be in that place if you get into all truth. Now, when he says, beware, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief, here is the Greek word evil, which is poneros. It means a vile, malicious act against God. Against God. Unbelief aligns anyone with the devil. Unbelief, false doctrine, the curse of false doctrine, which it is, aligns anyone giving into it with the devil. Unbelief aligns one with the devil. Because God is about truth. God is about faith. God is about delivering to you all that he has promised. Everything that Jesus bought and paid for on the cross with the stripes that he bore, the blood stripes that he bore, and the agony of them on the way to the cross, the unspeakable agony of the cross where he bore every sickness and every disease and every lack and every torment of man in your place on the cross. But it isn't good enough to just know that that's what he did. It's not even good enough just to appreciate that that's what he did. What is good enough is to say, Lord, I honor, I honor what you did for me. I honor the fact that that's what it took to wash me in the blood and make me a fit temple for the Holy Spirit. And now that you have given me this great privilege of having the Holy Spirit, the very power of you in my body dwelling within my spirit, I will honor you by keeping the whole truth, by finding out what the truth is. So whereas in the world you have to go out and buy the batteries because they're not included, and all you have to do is just fit the batteries into the device and it works and they run down and you have to get new batteries and keep replacing them. In the kingdom, once you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have this unlimited power source. But now you have to know how to work with him. You have to know how to make the right connections. And it always comes back to the truth. You know that with a natural mechanism, if the batteries are in the wrong way, if the terminals aren't clean, if the wires are crossed, it shorts out the whole system. It either doesn't work or it shorts it out if the wires are crossed. Well, what shorts out the power of the Holy Ghost working in your life is false doctrine and unbelief. You have to know the truth and you have to believe it. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, my commandments, we know that there are 10 New Testament commandments. If you don't have that series of teachings, please get it. It's number 148 in addition to this series today because we need to know what the 10 New Testament commandments of Jesus are. They're entirely different from the old and they're a graduate course as compared to just elementary school in the Old Covenant, even kindergarten in the Old Covenant. We're sons. We're responsible. And that's why we can have the Holy Spirit, because we've been made to be sons. So as you learn how to work with the Spirit, how to make the right connections, what the words are, you will understand why Jesus said, if you obey my commandments, 
you are him who loves me. But if you do not obey my commandments, you cannot love me. So everything is based on obedience, knowledge of the word, willingness to keep the word, and obedience to the word. And always, always focus on the fact that the Holy Spirit came to lead us into all truth and to manifest the power of God in us and through us. And if you do anything that is not of the whole word, word you are disconnecting. So please get these teachings, batteries not included, because that's the world. We have the battery. We have the Holy Spirit, but we have to know how to use this power, how to work with it. Otherwise, he's just there waiting to do something. And unfortunately, that's where he is in most Christians' lives. He's just there waiting to do something. The Word says that God can do exceedingly abundantly above all, all we can ask or imagine according to the power that works in us. And that is the Holy Spirit who works by our faith. The Word says that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. But it has to be our faith working, and then he will complete it. So learn all these different things. Understand that you are sanctified by truth, and only by truth. Understand that when you move apart from the truth in any way, any bit of false doctrine, that you are disconnecting from the Holy Spirit. Obedience is not only better than sacrifice, obedience is the only thing that God receives as love. So, all of these things have to be operated. You have to do your part. A covenant is a contract, and you have to keep your part of it. God's already kept His. God continues to fulfill His word in the earth. But for it to work in your life, you need to get these teachings and learn how to properly maintain your connection with the Holy Spirit, how to develop an intense relationship with Him so that this power can work in you without measure. There is God's way. And then there's every other way, which is the wrong way. There's only one right, His righteousness, God's way of doing and being right. You need to make certain that you are facing the right direction, facing straight down the middle of God's whole truth. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. It's not about just knowing a little of it, thinking that you, you know enough to get by and you'll find out the rest when the time comes. That's not going to get you where you want to go. It's not going to accomplish your healing, your prosperity, or your position in the eternal body of Christ. You need to be flowing and having the, the current of the Holy Spirit, the force, the power of the Holy Spirit flowing in a way that accomplishes the blessings that God has already set aside for you. You can't get your, your doctrine mixed up, your wires crossed, because it will short out the whole system. This is essential. God tells us so many things, and I, I go through tremendous amounts of information in this teaching set. And you need to get it because he tells us things that most people just push right past, such as do not be yoked together with unbelievers. Someone can be a Christian and be an unbeliever. Someone can actually think that they are fine and be wallowing in false doctrine and not care. And so that is someone who you cannot be yoked with in marriage, in 
um, friendship, in fellowship with other believers, in churches, no matter what it is, in any form, anyone that you're listening to, being taught by, you have to not be yoked together with unbelievers and not get your wires crossed. Because when you do, when you get confused and just sort of give up, then it cuts off the power. The power just stops flowing. In Ephesians 3, 9 through 12, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God, that means the multifaceted wisdom of God, which is found in this word and this word only, the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. We're supposed to tell the devil how it is, not let him tell us. According to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. This is his eternal purpose, that we make known to ourselves and all the way to the principalities and the powers, the manifold wisdom of God. Well, where do you find this manifold wisdom? Right here in the Word. And you see, God didn't give us a tract. He gave us the whole Bible, and we're responsible to know the Bible. He said to Joshua that he should study and meditate in the Word day and night, keep it before his eyes and in his heart, and then he would make his way successful. He, Joshua, would make his way successful. So you need to learn everything that I teach in these sets because you need to know how to maintain a full charge, a full operational power of the Holy Spirit so that you can be an overcomer in every situation because it is the overcomer that Jesus says that he will grant to sit with him in his throne as he overcame and sat with his father in his throne. So this is what we're all headed for. But you have to make sure you're going in the right direction so that you can get there. If you're going in the wrong direction, you're not going to get there. Sideways won't do it. It has to be straight ahead. We'll see you next time. Meanwhile, remember, you shall know the truth. And it's the truth that will make you free. We trust that you have been encouraged in God's Word during this broadcast. If you have and would like others to enjoy the teaching, write to us. Or to order materials or to make a gift by phone, you can by calling the phone number on the screen.